that will be led primarily by the false prophet. And then in chapter 18, he will describe the political, economic aspect of the kingdom led by the Antichrist and God's judgment upon it. Now, I wish to read to you <clears throat> the entire chapter here in chapter 17, 18 verses, so that you get a grasp of the Lord's intentions here in this stunning description. And then we are going to focus exclusively this morning on the first six verses where we will see the character, the clout, and the contempt of the final world religion, which is depicted as a harlot. So follow along as I read Revelation 17. And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I shall show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality. And those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality, and he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. <clears throat> and the woman was clothed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls having in her hand a gold cup full of abominations and of the unclean things of her immorality. And upon her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered greatly. And the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I shall tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten, the ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not, and is about to come up out of the abyss and to go to destruction. And those who dwell on the earth will wonder, whose name has not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they see the beast that he was and is not and will come. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits, and they are seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come, and when he comes he must remain a little while. And the beast which was and is not is himself also an eighth and is one of the seven and he goes to destruction. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but they receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. <coughs> These have one purpose, and they give their power and authority to the beast. These will rage war against the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, because he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are with him are the called and chosen and faithful. And he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw and the beast, these will hate the harlot and will make her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and will burn her up with fire. But God has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose and by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Now, it is important for you to understand the history of ancient Babylon in order to grasp what the Lord is telling us here with respect to mystery Babylon to come. That which, according to verse 5, is called the mother of harlots. Not just a harlot, but the mother of harlots. The one that actually birthed the blasphemous idolatries that will ultimately characterize this false religious system, this final mystery Babylon. So much of what I have to share with you this morning will be introductory. First of all, bear in mind that this final world religious system will be thoroughly demonic. 
therefore irresistibly appealing to man. It will be so vile and so blasphemous that the Lord describes Babylon's sins as being piled up as high as heaven in chapter 18 verse 5. This, I might add, will be the unholy counterpart to the bride of Christ. Now allow me to trace the history of Babylon for a few moments. 1,656 years after God created Adam, he judged man by a worldwide flood. All except eight people were killed in that flood. Those who, according to the word of God, found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Of course, that was Noah and his wife, his three sons and their wives. And we know, according to Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, that one of Noah's sons, Ham, had a descendant named Nimrod, and that Nimrod tried, according to Scripture, to build a kingdom called Babel, the Hebrew form of which is Babylon. And he did this in the land of Shinar, according to verse 10 of Genesis 10. That, by the way, is the region of Iraq today, the same region as was originally the place of the Garden of Eden, the land of Mesopotamia. And according to Genesis chapter 11 and verse 1, we read, the whole earth used the same language and the same words. Obviously, they were of the same family, the family of Noah. They all spoke the same language. And in verse 2, we read that they journeyed east to the land of Shinar, and they settled there. So basically, what we see happening in the biblical record is 100 years after the flood, Satan tries to establish an earthly kingdom through a wicked man named Nimrod, Noah's great-grandson. Nimrod being a foreshadow of the Antichrist. We learn more about their motivation in verse 4 of Genesis 11. And they said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven. And let us make for ourselves a name, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Now, this is commonly called the Tower of Babel. It was a ziggurat or a stage tower erected to facilitate idolatry. History reveals that on top of these ziggurats were the sign of the zodiac where priests would go to chart the course of the stars to determine the future. It should be no surprise that we still have this satanic practice with us today one that is absolutely forbidden for Christians to participate in. Just another ploy to distract man from worshiping the one true God who has actually ordained the end from the beginning. Now, we know that God was displeased with their idolatrous practice and their rebellion. He knew that it was thoroughly satanic. So according to verse 7, we read... The Lord saying this, Come, let us go down and there confuse their language that that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the whole earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. Now, being confused, the peoples had to coalesce or unite around those that spoke their language. Imagine if all of a sudden you couldn't speak the language of anybody around you, and then finally you heard someone that you could understand, and that's what they did. They gathered together, and they went their separate ways to find a region upon the earth that could support their particular group. But, dear friends, they took with them all of their idolatries, much of which historians have discovered was an ancient form of mother-son fertility worship. As we study a combination of myth, legend, and history, and archaeological finds, and so forth, all of this points to a woman originally named Semiramis, Semiramis, 